Uh, yeah, man. Let's talk about the he's the fighters, the trainers, and the gym, right? Yeah, yeah. So the one of the this is how our game has more depth than I guess traditional fighters. What some of the ways that they do? Um, we have fighter NFTs. We have trainers. We have gyms. The fighters are what fights, right? So that's Street Fighter. That's Tekken. You collect fighters. You buy your fighters or you find them grinding single-player mode, and you collect your arsenal of fighters. Um, you fight with them. They gain tokenized experience. You then take them, once they've earned enough, right? So you can fight with them all day. You can play the game all day. But you will run out of earnable capacity for tokenized experience and tokenized rewards, obviously. So it's like you play for an hour with one fighter maybe, and he's depleted his earning capacity. You can keep playing with him, but then you're not earning. So you can then take him to your gym, put him in your gym, and over time, so you can be away from keyboard or playing with other fighters, over time while he's stored in your gym, he will spend his tokenized experience and some reward to level up. And when he's leveled up, he's got slightly better stats and slightly more earn capacity, and he's replenished. And then out you go and use him again and so on and so forth. So there's this cycle of fight with him until he's, you know, earned all his experience, take him back to the gym, put him in, he'll level up, take him out, fight with him again. Creates a really strong player loop. Um, we have trainers. Trainers are essential to you training your fighter. Everyone who starts the game will have an average Joe trainer. That's just an average Joe. It's a baseline. So he'll allow you to train one fighter at a time and it will take – the base amount of time it takes, the base rate of time. The 10K trainer PFP drop, these are 10,000 unique trainers. So that average Joe, everyone gets in when they start the game. Every, he'll become synonymous with the game. You know, he'll be some crazy looking dude with scruffy hair who has a shed gym or something, you know, base yeah. level stuff. And then you can go buy a 10K PFP trainer drop trainer. Um, obviously, we'll all look visually unique. They have bonuses to the rate at which your fighter will level up in the gym. They also have a buff to your fighter in a fight if you have them uh, selected or on your loadout. So if they're coming with you out into the world or into PvP and they're essentially in your corner, they'll give you a teeny tiny buff. Not hugely significant, but in fight games, slight can become significant. So we want to keep it balanced. And we'll be testing that with the community for the first bunch of months, testing those ratios and buffs. But the trainer PFT drop will give you a buff fighting and a buff to your training speed. Then you have your gym. So again, when anyone that plays will just start with a gym, but you can upgrade your gym. So if you're, if you have an NFT gym, you can upgrade that gym with extra slots. Uh, for extra trainers who will then be able to train more fighters simultaneously. So it's basically just scaling your experience as you grow. And for gyms to upgrade, it's a matter of you bring a fighter into the gym to spend their tokenized experience in leveling up. The gym gets that tokenized experience, your gym. And as it builds up its coffers, it reaches new levels and you can expand it. So it cre it's a, yeah, it's, it's a progression plan that brings a gym and training to the fighter mechanic. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's almost like a, you know, fighter universe, you know, metaverse. Like you have yeah. your gym trainer, you know, you have multiple fighters uh, and you can train them and evolve them, um, their stats. So with exactly. that being, uh, when you get ready to sell your NFT, will the stats still stay attached and the peop the, the purchaser can uh, obtain everything you've accumulated with that particular? Absolutely. Okay, cool. cool. Absolutely. Very persistent. Not only that, but if you have a fighter that you've leveled up, right, to level 100, and you've won some big tournaments with him, you've won, you've grinded out, you know, the single player entire mode multiple times, whatever achievements you've won, those achievements will be attached to that NFT forever. So what that will mean in our future when pro esports players are playing the NFT esports mode, which we're going to champion out there. I'll get to that later if you want. But those guys, if they win a, you know, a big world stage 
tournament for fight legends. They get their trophy, and the fighter that they win with, that fighter will have that trophy attached to it, or the belt, or the medal, right? The significance of that tournament win will be attached to it. So if that pro esports pl- player ever puts that fighter on the market, it's got this obscure significance that came from its actual participation in actual tournaments. It breathes more life into the fighter, right? Like everyone's Ryu is Ryu. If I go into the biggest Street Fighter tournament right now and win, my the Ryu I used can't be sold as the Ryu that was used in that tournament. It's got no individual significance. But in ours, it does. Everything an NFT fighter does is recorded and it becomes part of their life. So it, brings, it breathes a lot of reality and life and dimension into each of the fighter assets that we have. Um, yeah, should increase value once again. Yeah, man, it's some amazing things y'all are building over there. Um, mm. And that's the, that's the amazing thing about blockchain tech and, you know, uh, NFTs, you know, that sense of ownership, you know, not playing a regular console game and, you know, grinding for a year without nothing to show for it after you get finished with it. You know, you can't go and sell the Ryu with uh, attributes or, or anything from Street Fighter, but you can with Fight Legends. Absolutely. Hell Player yeah. owners, it's a definitely in the future. Yeah, and we also have a um, sacrifice and summoning uh, NFT um, mechanism too, Will, if you want to go ahead and talk to them about that a little bit. Yeah, so when I looked at this and thought, okay, so one of the challenges that comes with bringing a high-level fight game to play to to integrating play to earn and NFTs is just the layout of the game, right? If you're building an RPG an MMO items, collectible items, they're big in those games, right? Um, In fight games, not so much. So where's the collectability factor, right? Why, how do you, He must be chasing after his son, guys. Just bear with us. Oh, sorry. No, that, that, that was a fumble. That was my fat thumb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so, yeah, with fight games, and they're limited characters, right? So in Pokemon, you got you start. we started with 150, 152, whatever it was. So you've got this depth. I mean, like, remember as a kid playing Pokemon, you're like, yeah, I'm going to catch them all. You couldn't do that in Street Fighter. What are you going to catch? 18 different people? We're done? No. So... In our game, what we did is we expanded each fighter. So if Ryu was in our game, he'd come in five different rarities, as does every fighter. Common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary. And what that means is our common version will have all his moves and the basic skin. The uncommon will have all those moves, a different skin, and one unique move to uncommon. And so on and so forth, all the way up to Legendary, which comes with the four unique moves, the Uncommon, Rare, Epic, and Legendary, plus the base set, and obviously a Legendary skin. And so what we've allowed is for what we've created is for players who've collected three commons to sacrifice them for an Uncommon. Three Uncommons for a Rare, three Rares for an Epic, three Epics for a Legendary. Um, So that puts a bit of a burn mechanic on the lower end of the NFTs. So if a market gets saturated with too many common types, it's not going to because they're going to be burnt and upgraded to the higher rarities, which creates another progression plan and depth. But it also allows people to collect, right? You, maybe you collect one of each. Maybe you want to collect a common, uncommon, epic, rare, and legendary, so you've got the full Ross set or the full Nyx set or whatever set we've created. So every time when we create eight fighters, we've actually got 40 to be collected, if you're collecting um, and a gamified mechanic to reduce that. And absolutely. And even if you're collecting all those, uh, we also have free to play. So if you have a whole bunch of fighter NFTs and, and you can't possibly play with them all, you can always put those up uh, for a roster of free player, uh, free fighters that people can come on and play and earn for free and split the profits. So that's definitely part of our roadmap as well. <laughs> 